Um, just very briefly, just to add to what Will covered there in a little bit more detail, we are an integrated uh, suite of uh, tools for dedicated to the agricultural market space. Uh, today, looking at livestock carcass analysis, uh, we're a commercial company, so our customers, uh, we're a barometer to our customers' needs and wants, and we've, over the last couple of years, had a steady push, I suppose, to look deeper or take a deeper dive at their livestock production operations. To date, we've been looking heavily at weight gain performance analysis, amongst other aspects, but they wanted to take that a step further and look beyond just weight gain performance, and that's what's led us to carcass analysis. So, starting with the raw carcass, they're getting raw data back, or at best, some PDF worksheets that's just a whole bunch of numbers that's great to look at, but get filed away and nothing really more actioned on them. So, we took that raw data and turned into pretty pictures. We took the view from experience that if you can engage people better with pictures and visualisation tools rather than just straight hard number spreadsheets. So that raw data, this is a sample data that we've been using through our development the last several months uh, with uh, Central Queensland producers. This sample data here we've got, uh, it doesn't come out real clear, but uh, two traits is lean meat yield versus MSA grading grouped back to a breed. Now, we're currently supporting 46 separate traits coming back from processes, and that's steadily growing with more being added shortly. But for the purpose of this uh, exercise, lean meat yield versus MSA grouped back to a breed. We can clean this data up and look at them on an average base. So that starts to now tell you something about the individual breeds and their performance. Back to that raw data again, we don't see much when we see a clustered pattern like that. So we've got the ability to fine tune or filter through the noise to start looking for contributing patterns uh, on that one. So filtering it down here, we've now got just two breeds showing. And I think it's pretty clear there we can start to see a pattern emerging out of that data. So two breeds, one's giving better lean meat yield, another one doing better on the MSA. Grouping that same data, but instead of by breed, we're going by pick of origin. So this is, has a trading and a breeding background, this operation. So for pick of origin, basically where the animals were born. So it doesn't matter how many sets of hands the animals went through to get to you, it's where they're actually born and bred. So again, a lot of noise, but filtering down through the data, we can find one pick of origin that's giving a nice, consistent grouping of animals, whereas other animals have got quite a diverse spread. So if you can find a producer or a breeder that's producing consistent, tightly grouped animals, then that can be a significant value to you as a trader. In this exact example, we've got some uh, producers that are purely trading. Through this data, they are now going back and targeting directly to the breeders themselves and no longer going through sale yards anymore. So they don't want to run the lottery of the sale yards. They can go back to the breeders. They know the numbers they can do out of them and they can private negotiate premiums for that breeder, win-win situation. Here's two more breeding properties. The data there, you'd say you've got consistent animals out of those two different breeding properties. But this is where it comes back to being a very compli compli potentially complicated issue in that lean meat yield MSA doesn't necessarily give you the full picture. We've got the ability to then plot this on what's a radar chart. So for those not familiar, those, the red and blue lines are those two breeding properties. The spokes to the radar are different traits. So there's our lean meat yield and MSA. That's why they plotted very similar sort of animals. However, if we start looking at other traits like marbling and even the total value, you can see that there's quite a change or difference between those animals out of those two producers. So you can't just rely on two parameters to make an assessment on the animals. So why is all this important? When we're working through the development of this carcass analysis, it actually highlighted itself. The why part came out, we had two steers in one group of data. Identical weights, identical fat scores. When we look back at all the analytics on weight gains, you had two successfully performing animals. However, when we drill down into the carcass data, 
there was a $185 value difference at the end for those. Extrapolating that out across the several hundred head that were involved in this, and we're talking significant money for a producer. The cause of that $185 was lean meat yield. So by establishing that for this particular producer with the lean meat yield, they can now drill down to say, in this simple example, these two animals, what's different about these two animals that gave that $185 difference in lean meat yield? Is it a breed thing? Is it an environmental thing? So the point to this is there's over 46 traits and more coming from producers almost monthly. So there is so many different ways to analyse the performance of your animals. You then got to combine that against your weight gain performance of your animals. So your carcass is not your sole single point of truth. Just because you're getting a premium carcass, you've identified what is a premium carcass. If it takes you 30% longer on weight gains to get that premium carcass, the question needs to be asked, is it worth it? So combining it with the weight gain performance analysis is what you need in conjunction with your carcass to give you that complete picture of those performing animals and what is it that is giving you that best value on those animals. But there is no one single answer. One producer finds this solution for them, it's almost guaranteed to be not the same answer for even their neighbour. Because working through this trials and developing this, across those sample customers we got, there was such a wide variation on what were the answers for those producers. And now these were breeders, traders, uh, stud type operations, all had different objectives of what they were trying to uh, find out about those animals for it. So that's one thing that we do need to emphasise with this, is it is an involved process to analyse the carcass. It's not a simple give you a formula, go away, apply it to your operation, and you'll have your answer. Everyone will be different. And when we look down to it, what I ran through there is a very simplistic example of analysing this sort of carcass data. We've got the environmental part, but we've also got the genetics part. One of the challenges that we're now running up against is Processors are supplying this data to their customers, not the potential breeder of those animals. So breeders are still having the limitation of having access to the data of how their animals are performing. And we see that as a challenge moving forward is for those breeders to be able to understand and be able to make it, uh, adaptions to their genetic lines. Referring to some more examples working through this, uh, one producer identified a hump issue creeping in in their bloodlines over the last five years of data. That all materialised out of analysing their carcass data. We have other significant producers where they have a theory, rightfully or wrongfully, that polled versus non-polled animals are delivering differences in carcass over time. They have a feeling that it exists, but nothing to back that up. Now they do have this data that they can use to analyse these theories in their production system as to whether or not they do need to do something about that polled versus non-polled situation with it. So as this has just been released and is evolving, we're going to get more and more stories about how people are engaging with the carcass analysis and how they're going to be using it for their uh, situations. One that I spoke to even earlier this week, a uh, uh, Hereford stud operation, are looking to use carcass data to back up their claims on the performance of their animals, which is absolutely imperative from their business marketing point of view. So that pretty much wraps up our carcass side of uh, analysis that we're doing at the moment. But like I said, it is quite a detailed and uh, deep diving topic. And as new technology is evolving, everybody may have come across DEXA, the X-raying of carcass. Um, where they're trying to take the subjective nature out of carcass analysis into more of the objective, that data will start to see emerging uh, as early as next year and that then you'll be able to place even greater faith in the numbers being um, provided around your carcass of your animals. Mm -hmm.